At some point, safety just is pure waste. I mean, if you just want to be safe, don't get out of bed, don't get in your car, don't do anything. Yeah. At some point, you're going to take some risk, and it really is a risk-reward question. I said, I think I can do this just as safely by breaking the rules. Rather than spend $65,000 to climb Mount Everest, maybe die, and spend a month living in a miserable base camp, you can change your life in a week. That is another quote from Stockton Rush, the CEO of OceanGate. The quote is an endorsement of his own adventure travel company, touting it as a better means to get an adrenaline rush than other expensive outings. And as we now know, that quote has not aged well. At the time of publishing this video, we are in the aftermath of the Titan submersible disaster that claimed the lives of five people who had made plans to visit the wreckage of the Titanic on Ocean Gate's submersible named Titan. Their voyage was unsuccessful, and all five men are now dead. I have seen several jokes and memes about these men, which I find to not only be distasteful and tacky, but unoriginal and not funny. I do believe that some of the jokes are rooted in jealousy. There is an eat the rich mentality that reared its head and became very visible on social media during the days that the Titan vessel was said to be lost. Not surprisingly, that same mindset was on display when the Titanic sank in 1912. And even though I don't like seeing people make fun of the deaths of rich people, just like poor people or middle class people, I do understand why some people do it. I understand it, not condone it. Wealth disparity, or income inequality, or the wealth gap, however you want to label it, it was something that people were complaining about in 1912 when the Titanic sank, and it's something that people are still complaining about today. How, at any time since the Gilded Age, and maybe even before, the top 1% owned a very large portion of the country's wealth. So, for that reason, Many people will throw humanity aside and delight in the downfall, pain, sorrow, or even death of the wealthy. But in this particular story where Ocean Gate is concerned, there is another connection to the Titanic beyond the general population's disdain for the wealthy. There's a family connection. The CEO of Ocean Gate, Stockton Rush, who died along with the passengers aboard his carelessly crafted Titan vessel, is the great-great-grandson-in-law of two of Titanic's most famous and wealthy passengers, the co-owner of Macy's, Isidore Strauss, and his wife, Ida. The couple that was fictitiously and unforgettably portrayed as lying in bed as the icy water flooded their cabin in James Cameron's Titanic. Now, the family connection and the Titanic story of Isidore and Ida Strauss. Let's get into it. But first, if you like these videos about the most scandalous stories from yesteryear that make Ty's Hot Mess History a time capsule for the culture, subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can know every time that I upload one of these videos or every time that I live stream, and hit that like button to support this video. Thank you. Now, on to why you are here. Ocean Gate CEO Richard Stockton Rush III came from wealth and a long line of American elites. He descended from two men who signed the Declaration of Independence, whose names are both in his own name, Richard Stockton and Benjamin Rush. His maternal grandparents were millionaires. His grandfather, Ralph K. Davies, was an oil millionaire and later the chairman of a container shipping company called American President Lines. California Pacific Medical Center in San Francisco has a medical center named after him. That was the city that he and his wife made their home. And if you're in San Francisco or have visited the beautiful city, you may have seen or heard of the Louise M. Davies Symphony Hall. That venue was named after Richard Stockton's grandmother. She paid $5 million of its construction costs, plus an extra $3 million to attract the best conductors from around the world to run the shows. She was a major benefactor of many of San Francisco's charities. Both Mr. and Mrs. Davies believed that their children should not receive a bigger inheritance than was good for them, so they gave away many of their millions to the city they called home. By the way, 
Mrs. Davies, Stockton's grandmother, died on June 22, 1998. Stockton and the Ocean Gate passengers were pronounced dead on June 22 this year. And oddly, her granddaughter was quoted in a San Francisco newspaper comparing her grandmother to a well-known Titanic passenger, Molly Brown. She said that her grandmother lit up a room when she entered it, like the unsinkable Molly Brown. Stockton Rush's wife is Wendy Rush. She's the director of communications at Ocean Gate and more importantly, for the purpose of our story today, the great-great-granddaughter of Isidore and Ida Strauss, Titanic's wealthy first-class couple who died together on that voyage. Mrs. Wendy Rush is descended from one of the Strauss's seven children, their daughter, Minnie. Minnie Strauss married Dr. Richard Whale in 1905, and their son, Richard Jr., later worked in the family business, serving as president of Macy's New York. Isidore and Ida Strauss 1888 was a good year for Mr. Strauss, as reported in an article in the New York Tribune. He would ring in the new year starting in the venture that is the reason why we know his name today. On January 3rd of that year, Isidore Strauss and his brother, Nathan, became partners in R.H. Macy and Company or as most of us call it, simply Macy's. The Strauss brothers vowed that they would carry on the same business practices as Mr. Macy had done. For instance, running it as a cash-only enterprise, and they promised that their operations would be so much the same that their suppliers, employers, and customers would not even notice that there had been a change in leadership. Just to be clear, Isidore had already been successful in business and politics before this point, but this is why he was always referred to as being the owner or co-owner of Macy's who died on the Titanic. Speaking of that, like many other stories you have likely heard of some Titanic passengers, Isidore and Ida had made other travel plans originally. But, as the Brooklyn Eagle reported, they were able to book their trip on the Titanic at the last minute, and they did. And now, we have a few first-hand accounts from a handful of survivors who witnessed the last moments of Isidore and Ida Strauss. Each story varies only in the slightest of words, but they all convey one thing very clearly. Mrs. Ida Strauss loved her husband with all of her heart, and she was determined to stay by his side till the very end. Even after he tried to save her, he wanted to save her life, and she didn't want to have her life without him in it. Theirs is a true love story. The Evening World reported on April 18, 1912, that, quote, Mrs. Isidore Strauss refused to leave her husband's side, and both perished together, end quote. And that is true. What apparently is not true in their headline is that Titanic's band played Nearer My God to Thee as the ship sank. That was a rumor started by the tabloids for dramatic effect to sell newspapers. According to writer Ian Whitcomb, who is very well researched on this part of Titanic history, Wallace Hartley, the band leader himself, was asked the now ominous question of what he would play in the event that there was peril on the sea. He actually said, quote, I'd never play nearer my God to thee, end quote. He said that instead he would play something cheerful, and survivors did name songs that were popular dance songs of that time as the music that they heard in the ship's last minutes. But back to the loving couple. James Johnson one of Titanic's crew members who was on duty when the ship struck the iceberg said he overheard Mrs. Isidore Strauss when she refused to leave her husband, telling him that if the ship was sinking, she would die with him. Quote, It was the most pitiful spectacle I ever witnessed. Mr. Strauss pleaded with the old lady to go into one of the lifeboats, but she threw her arms about his neck half hysterically and refused to leave his side. I had been ordered to one of the oars in lifeboat number two and saw the elderly couple plainly still embracing as the little craft I was in was pushed away. End quote. 
Then there was Dr. Washington Dodge, another one of Titanic's millionaires, a financier from California who survived the sinking along with his wife and six-year-old son. As he recalled it, quote, There was no panic of any description, except in the steerage. I saw two frenzied men shot down by officers as they tried to fight their way into a lifeboat. That was the only outbreak I saw. Mrs. Isidore Strauss could have been saved, for there was plenty of room in the lifeboats for her. The officers went to her and told her to take her place. She asked if her husband was to go. When told only the women would be taken on board, she threw her arms around Mr. Strauss's neck and kissed him. She turned to the officers and told them she was going to stay with her husband. The dear woman died there, too, rather than leave her helpmate. End quote. And then there was Colonel Archibald Gracie. He was the last man saved from the Titanic, and he saw a lot. Among the scenes that he witnessed were the last moments of Mr. and Mrs. Strauss. His words... Mrs. Isidore Strauss went to her death because she would not desert her husband. Although he pleaded with her to take a place in the boat, she steadfastly refused. And when the ship settled, the two, with their arms about each other, were engulfed. End quote. Now, if the name Gracie rings a bell for you, it might be because that is the name of the mansion that is the residence of the mayor of New York City, Gracie Mansion. Its full name is the Archibald Gracie Mansion. And yes, this Colonel Archibald Gracie comes from that family. He was Colonel Archibald Gracie IV. His father was the third, and his father built the mansion in 1799. Colonel Archibald Gracie, as stated before, was the last man to be saved from the Titanic, and he was the first adult who survived the disaster to die passing away in December of 1912. If you want more on his story, let me know in the comments section. Even though Ida did not take one of those coveted spots in a lifeboat, she wasn't the only woman in the Strauss party. Her maid, Ellen Bird, was traveling with the couple to tend to her, and she got into a lifeboat. Isidore and his valet, John Farthing, urged both women to save themselves and not to go to the certain death that they knew they, as men, would have to. In one final act of kindness to her maid, Ida gave Ellen her fur coat, telling Ellen that she herself would not be needing it. Ellen Bird survived and tried to return the fur coat to the eldest Strauss daughter, Sarah. Sarah told her to keep the coat because Ida had given it to her. The body of Isidore Strauss was recovered, and he is buried in the Woodlawn Cemetery in New York. Ida's body was never found. And if her great-great-grandson-in-law has joined her at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean after trying to visit the Titanic, which is, among other things, a memorial site to its victims, that is a chilling thought indeed. My sources for this story are Submersible Pilot's Spouse is Descended from a Famous Titanic Couple by Anushka Patil for the New York Times. The Multimillionaire Who Dreamed of Being the First Man on Mars by Danielle Hussein and Emma James for DailyMail.com. Shadow of the Titanic by Andrew Wilson. Napa Valley Register Archives 1998. Sacramento Bee Archives 1998. New York Tribune Archives, 1888. Titanic Sank with a Waltz, Not a Hymn, by Ian Whitcomb for Los Angeles Times, 1998. NationalArchives.gov.uk. The Brooklyn Daily Eagle Archives, 1912. The Evening World Archives, 1912. And Times Union Archives, 1912. This video has been brought to you by me. Well, my Patreon is a sponsor for this video. If you like these dirty scandals on my channel, then you'll love my Patreon, Ty's Too Hot Hot Mess History, 
It has all of the stuff that I can't talk about or show here because it's just too hot, too violent, too sexual, too graphic, too much. Come and join us there for the hot, hot mess history. The link is in the description box.